It's kind of ironic that most believers, while seeking the advancement of God's kingdom, somehow forget that God rewards those that are a part of moving forward His purposes here on earth, mostly because they feel it's selfish and self-absorbed to receive benefits from God. But wait a minute, we can't pretend to be holier than the God who says in Matthew 6, 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amazing, right? However, if we look at the following verses, it becomes obvious that what God is against is His children seeking things or worrying to see a need fulfilled. Matthew 6, 25 Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Rather he wants us to prioritize him, his kingdom, his righteousness, and his purposes, while trusting that he will add all these other needs to us. Trusting God and having faith in his goodness is crucial as believers and soldiers in his end-time army. Hebrews 11, 6 AMP tells us that without faith it is impossible to walk with God and please Him. For whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that He rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek Him. God reminds us assuredly in His word that He rewards those that diligently seek Him. He is not unrighteous. He doesn't forget our labor of love towards His kingdom. That's why Hebrews 6, 9. But beloved, even though we speak to you in this way, we are convinced of better things concerning you and of things that accompany salvation. For God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown for his name in ministering to the needs of the saints, God's people, as you do. And we desire for each one of you to show the same diligence all the way through so as to realize and enjoy the full assurance of hope until the end, so that you will not be spiritually sluggish, but will instead be imitators of those who through faith lean on God with absolute trust and confidence in Him and His power, and by patient endurance, even when suffering, are now inheriting the promises. For when God made the promise to Abraham, He swore an oath by Himself, since He had no one greater by whom to swear, saying, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply you. And so, having patiently waited, he realized the promise in the miraculous birth of Isaac as a pledge of what was to come from God. God is truly love, and he proves it for always being there for us, especially if we trust for his goodness while you seek his will. Can you have faith that he is watching out for you because you are watching out to see his truth advance? and his kingdom and will prosper on earth. You shall serve only the Lord your God, and he shall bless your bread and water. I will also remove sickness from among you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land, 
I will fulfill the number of your days. Exodus 23, 25. We must do this in faith and not as an affront to God. Isaiah 43, 26 AMP says, Remind me of your merits through a thorough report. Let us plead and argue our case together. State your position that you may be proved right. Every nation is responsible for the welfare and well-being of her ambassadors. This is the same way God is also responsible for our well-being. Proverbs 13, 17 A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. No we start operating in the supernatural. Just like the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles and caused them to operate in the supernatural, so we also operate in the supernatural when we work with the Holy Spirit to see many brought to Christ. The crowds gathered and were paying close attention to everything Philip said. As they heard the message and saw the miraculous signs which he was doing, validating his message, for unclean spirits, demons, shouting loudly, were coming out of many who were possessed, and many who had been paralyzed and lame were healed. Acts 8, 6 Number 3. We enjoy greater dimensions of grace. And with great ability and power, the apostles were continuously testifying to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace, God's remarkable loving kindness and favor and goodwill, rested richly upon them all. Acts 4, 33 AMP Also, see 2 Corinthians 12, 9 But he has said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. My loving kindness and my mercy are more than enough, always available, regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected and is completed and shows itself most effectively in your weakness. Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may completely enfold me and may dwell in me. So I am well pleased with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, and with difficulties, for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak in human strength, then I am strong, truly able, truly powerful, truly drawing from God's strength. Number 4 we begin to manifest the gifts of the Spirit. Here are examples of the manifestation of these gifts. Then Peter, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, members of the Sanhedrin, the Jewish High Court, if we are being put on trial today to interrogate us for a good deed done to benefit a disabled man, as to how this man has been restored to health let it be known and clearly understood by all of you and by all the people of Israel that in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you demanded be crucified by the Romans and whom God raised from the dead, in this name, this is by the authority and power of Jesus. This man stands here before you in good health. This Jesus is the stone which was despised and rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. Acts 4, 8 Also, Stephen manifested another dimension of the gift of the Spirit in Acts 6, 10 AMP. But they were not able to successfully withstand and cope with the wisdom and the intelligence and the power and inspiration of the Spirit by whom he was 